Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin, going back at you. Uh, this should be week number two of my new little Cowboys vlog series here. Uh, so week two of free agency. I'm filming this as of Tuesday evening. So a few things have happened now since the last time you know I talked to y'all. Uh, obviously the last time I talked to you was before anything had happened. So it was the day before free agency. Just a little recap. Most people have seen the news by now in the last week that we released DeMarcus Ware, released Miles Austin. Um, Ware subsequently was signed by the Broncos. Hatcher got signed by the Redskins. So we kind of know all that stuff that's gone on. Really quick, my thoughts on that. I still don't agree with the decision on Ware. Obviously, if you saw my last uh, vlog where I talked about that, I gave a big spiel about what I thought about Ware. Um, if you want to see that, you know, go ahead and click the click the link there to see my first one. Um, so I don't agree with releasing him. I can understand the money thing, but you know we got reports coming out, none substantiated really, just kind of theories by some of the people at the Cowboys website and things that he was willing to somewhat take a bit of a pay cut. So I don't know. Not really sure what was going on there. Um, tell you the truth, I'm a little bit more upset about where he ended up. I think than the fact that we released him because I just I loathe the Broncos with a passion. Um, besides going within our division, that was about the last place I wanted to see him go, so I really don't like seeing him wear that uniform, but obviously nothing any of us can do about that, so we got to move on. Uh, Hatcher signing with the Redskins, I'll get into that a little bit more later. Nothing's happened with Austin yet. A little bit surprised he hasn't gotten a look, but we'll see what happens with him. Hopefully, just for his sake, he at least gets on somewhere and tries to get a chance to maybe be healthy. Um, because I think when healthy, he's still got something there. Uh, Cowboys related, you know, they signed up through uh, this week. They had signed a couple of lesser known guys. Uh, Jeremy Mincy, the defensive end, and then Terrell McLean, the defensive tackle. Uh, personally, don't really know a whole lot about those guys. I would heard the name of Mincy before, to be honest. Hadn't heard of McLean. Um, tried to find some video on them, couldn't find anything really, at least pro-related, uh, except for a couple of quick highlight uh, plays. Um, so I'm kind of going a little bit more by what I've read, maybe from the Cowboys website about these guys. Uh, seems like, especially in the t case of Mincy, he's going to be kind of a rotational guy, not being looked at as a starter, as defensive end. Um, and from what I've read, seems to maybe be able to swap in and be a three technique in nickel packages, possibly. So, kind of an interesting little twist there. Um, from what I've seen, because he was with Jacksonville for a while and then was with Denver at the end of the season last year, um, maybe with Jacksonville, I guess he showed some quick moves, quick pass rush moves, which could, you know, be helpful on a rotational basis. So, we'll kind of see what happens there. Um, McLean, I'm a little bit more intrigued by as the one technique, I guess, is what many people are projecting him as. But from everything I've seen from the guys on the website who have actually been able to see film on him, he doesn't really get moved. He can kind of sit there and be that immovable object in the middle, which is what we need um, to complement whoever's going to be the three technique, which we'll get to as we found out what happened this evening. Um, so, you know, obviously not the big name splash guys that we're used to seeing, but especially with where our salary cap situation has been, not really surprising we get some smaller guy or smaller signings. Um, so we'll see what happens with those guys. More than likely, I'm thinking rotational. McLean from the Sounds of him maybe has a chance to battle out with Hayden um, for the one technique starter, but obviously we've got to see what happens in the draft and after that undrafted free agents and training camp and as we go along. So uh, really ever since we signed those guys, not really a whole lot has happened except for visits. Uh, we had that whole scenario with the linebacker that was with the Saints and we signed him and then we didn't sign him. So kind of a confusing scenario there, but as of this point he's still not signed by us, though I did read something that said he visited with us again a few days ago, so I'm not really sure what that's about, but moving on from that. Uh, the next signing, really, that happened for us was yesterday, on Monday, when it was announced we signed a two-year contract with Brandon Whedon, the quarterback. Uh, seemed to be a lot of mixed reactions to that. A lot of people saying, what are we doing? Other people saying, hey, this could be a good signing. 
I guess I'm kind of a little bit in between. Um, kind of depends to me on what Orton decides to do. Is he going to retire? Is he going to stay? What are they going to do? Um, to the Cowboys' credit on this, they basically signed him for almost nothing in terms of NFL type of contract money. Uh, so really he's a very low hit on the salary cap and really wouldn't even be much of a hit. As far as I've read, I think he maybe he doesn't even become a hit on the salary cap unless he makes the team for the start of the season. So, you know, you bring a guy in who's young in terms of NFL experience, not young in terms of age. He's almost the same age as our starters now. Um, but had some, at least had some starts in the league, even though he wasn't doing very well and he played on a bad team. But, you know, maybe you got a guy there who can be at least a third string guy, get some, take some reps in OTAs, training camp. And who knows, maybe a change of scenery and that kind of stuff. Maybe he develops into a decent backup. So kind of see what happens from there. I don't think this move should detract them from possibly looking later on in the draft, fourth round and on, to see if there's any guy you could develop, like a McCarron or a Murray or any of those kind of guys. But we'll see what happens with that. Uh, other big news, you know, over the weekend and then through yesterday and today was bringing in... For visits, Henry Melton, the defensive tackle, and Jared Allen, the defensive end. Uh, there was rumors earlier in last week that we were looking at Peppers, and then Peppers signed with Green Bay. So that didn't happen. Then we kind of focused on Melton and Jared Allen. Uh, Jared Allen, from everything I've seen, visits went well, but he's kind of gone back to discuss things with his family, and we'll see what he decides there. The kicker with Allen, I think, is going to be what, how much money he thinks he's worth and whether we can afford him or not. Um, Melton, as anybody who's watching this who's been paying attention to the news today, as of Tuesday night, it has been confirmed that we signed Henry Melton. No numbers have come out yet, at least at the point where I'm filming this. Uh, from what I've seen, though, it's they're talking it's a one-year deal with a three-year option for the team at the end of the year. Um, so it will be interesting to see kind of what the money is in terms of that three-year option and whatnot, but kind of the kind of good, I think, the way they structured it. They do a one-year deal. If he does well, then they have the option to pick up a three, and I'm sure if they do that, they'll probably do some kind of restructure, because more than likely, that three-year option has big money for those three years. So, uh, But I'm excited about the signing. I think everybody kind of thought he would be a natural fit, because he's the three technique, which we lost with Hatcher. He's played for Marinelli when he was with the Bears. Uh, a lot of things just kind of seem to be in sync with that. Um, the question I think is going to be his knee um, for the health because he's coming off the ACL. Uh, the reports I've seen said that his knee was checked out by every team he's been with, or he's been visiting, I should say, and it's checked out okay. Uh, so it gives us hope there. And, you know, ACL is never anything you want to sneeze at, but, you know, we've seen a lot of guys come back from that. So um, if he can get back to the form he was when he was with the Bears under Marinelli, I think we got a steal there for, you know, getting a 27-year-old, I think is how old he'll be this season, to play three technique for us. And, uh, yeah, I, I like the signing, and I think uh, it's a good step. So we'll have to see what we can do from here. Um, whether we're, I don't think we're going to be done in free agency because there's really there's a lot of free agents still out there, just not really many big names. Um, and obviously we've got that needed defensive end now, which I think the team would probably like to fill with a free agent and not have to depend on that in the draft. Um, signing Melton does keep us from having to sign or having to draft a defensive tackle. Um, it puts it a little bit farther down on our needs. Uh, me personally, I wouldn't shy away from defensive tackle at the first round pick because of this, but it makes it less of a necessity, and especially if we could find another defensive end Hypothetically, if it's Allen, it would really give us the chance to truly go best player available. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, so really, that's about all we've done this last week. Um, kind of the only thing left to see right now is what's going on with Allen. And from what I've seen, he'll make the decision sometime by the end of this week who he's thinking he wants to go with. Uh, really quick, what have the other teams in our division done? Because uh, there's been... A lot of the news kind of revolving around Dallas really hasn't done much. The rest of the NFC East has just been making move after move. Um, so kind of some of the bigger moves that our division rivals have made, uh, starting with Philly, I think their big move was when they traded for Darren Sproles. Um, 
tell you the truth, a little bit... Well, I think you have to be a little bit concerned with that because he's going into Chip Kelly's system uh, where you can spread guys out and then you with the threat of, you know, Sproles and then you've got uh, McCoy and just the dynamic that they can do there with their running backs now. Um, so that'll be interesting to see because obviously he was a big weapon for the Saints. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens there. I think even without Sproles, the necessity for getting better play out of our linebackers this year was going to be uh, paramount, uh, especially hopefully having Bruce Carter bounce back. The addition of Sproles, I think, just makes that even more of a pronounced necessity that we need the good play out of our linebackers to show up again this year. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, you know, Bruce Carter will kind of reemerge. Sean Lee will be back and healthy. And we'll see what kind of happens with that other guy. I'm kind of pulling for Holloman myself. Um, I think he showed some real signs of growth there. And we'll see what happens in the draft. Maybe we find some other guy there also that can help. Um, other than that, Philly, I just kind of looked at some of the things. They've done a lot, but the only other big recognizable name they signed was Malcolm Jenkins, also from New Orleans. Um, so it kind of boosts their secondary a little bit. Um, he's not the greatest, but he's not a slouch by any means. So it definitely helps them in the secondary. Uh, Washington, their big move, obviously, was the guy they took from us uh, with Hatcher. A uh, little bit odd, uh, in my opinion, because they're a 3-4 up there, and he didn't play as well for us in a 3-4 as he did in a 3 technique in a 4-3. So it'll be interesting to kind of see what they do there. If they play him and probably on the same side as Arakpo would be my guess, and then they move him in on nickel packages maybe to the inside. Um, so, you know, it, it'll be paramount for our offensive lineman to be able to block him. Um, probably you're going to see him face off with guys like, you know, a Leary or a Frederick most of the time. So, you know, it'll be good for those guys to kind of be continuing to up their games. Um, other than that, you know, they signed Tracy Porter, who hasn't really done a whole lot of noticeable stuff since he was in New Orleans. Um, but it can't hurt them to add somebody else to their secondary. Uh, the Giants have been the team that's kind of made a lot of moves. There hasn't been a whole lot of giant names, um, with the exception of a few. It's just been kind of a signing here and there every single day, it seems like. So, you know, um, Leron McClain from the Ravens, the linebacker, Quentin Demps, the safety, Walter Thurman from Seattle. Uh, the big signing they made was uh, DRC, Dominic Rogers camardi Um... And then they also, I just saw they signed Trendon Holiday, the return man from the Broncos. So it's just kind of been a lot of different signings that they've made. I think the biggest effect probably for them is DRC, just because he adds another, you know, well-known corner uh, to their team. They signed him to a pretty substantial deal from what I've read. Um, you know, that and the addition of Walter Thurman, who was part of Seattle's secondary yeah, it definitely improves their secondary a bit, so, you know, we'll kind of see what happens there. I don't, it doesn't scare me by any means, really, uh, but it definitely helps improve what they've got. But, you know, all those teams have also lost people, um, but I'm not going to go too in-depth into them. I'm just kind of highlighting a couple of things they did. So, so yeah, we'll kind of, you know, look more at the divisional guys as the draft comes around, see what they did in the draft and how they improve their teams there. Um, Otherwise, probably won't be giving too many more updates on our NFC East folks unless they something big happens. Um, so other than that, you know, that really is kind of the recap of the last week of free agency. Um, this video, I think, will be a little bit shorter than the last one. I think the last one will be almost a half hour, which won't be really the same, you know, as we go on. I think last week's was a little bit bigger just because I was kind of giving an intro into the whole thing. Um... So just to kind of finish up this video, I ran another draft simulator uh, today. Like I said, I'll be doing to do those with each video as the draft comes up. Just to kind of give an idea of kind of where I, you know, I, where I go with these simulations. You know, not necessarily just me doing a mock, um, uh, but just kind of like I explained that simulator where the computer kind of checks the projected needs and player rankings and then shows you what's left over. Uh, this one had some interesting things in there, which I don't think is going to happen in the draft, but I just went with it just based on what was there. So I did another four-rounder this time. 
Uh, so in round one, uh, this one was kind of interesting because of the signing today of Henry Melton, um, because Aaron Donald was available. Um, along with that, you had Ebron, the tight end out of North Carolina. Um, don't freak out, I did not pick the tight end. I think we'd all freak out if we picked tight end, especially in the first. Uh, Clinton Dix, the safety out of Alabama, was there. Uh, Marquise Lee, the wide receiver out of SC. Mosley, the linebacker from Alabama. And Martin, the tackle out of Notre Dame. Um, possibly a controversial way to go. I did go ahead and still pick Aaron Donald. Um, I'm kind of in the mindset of doing a little bit of the Seattle mode um, for our defense and just getting a whole bunch of rotational guys to just continue punching offenses in the face with our defensive line. And we still, even though we know we signed Melton, it's that one year with the third year option. We don't know yet what his knee's going to do. So, if nothing else, it's an insurance policy, and it can never hurt to have another guy who's ready to step in at that position. So I still went with Aaron Donald there. Uh, second round, um, to be honest, second through fourth, these became very tough decisions based on who the simulator had available. Uh, this was one where I don't think it was all that realistic, um, because Jernigan, the defensive tackle from Florida State, was available here. Um, other guys who were available easily, the defensive tackle from Florida, Murphy, the defensive end from Stanford, uh, Richardson, the tackle from Tennessee, and then uh, Quanjo, the tackle from Alabama, and then Benjamin and Adams, the wide receivers out of Florida State and Fresno State. Um, probably based off of rankings, I would have gone Jernigan here. Um, you know, in hindsight, that probably would be what a team would probably do based on where he's rated. Um, and I may have gone a little bit off as far as rankings in my pick here because I ended up going with Devontae Adams, the wide receiver from Fresno State. Um, I just, I don't want to be dominating all my picks with defensive linemen, even though it kind of goes against what I just said with my pick of Donald. But um, just seeing some of the film on Adams and just, being able to have another uh, viable option at wide receiver, particularly as I explained last week when I had, I think I also had Adams as a pick. Um, in case of the, you know, knock on wood potential of Dez or Williams going down with injury, who could step in as a one or a two option? Um, because after Dez and Williams right now, we just have Beasley and uh, Dwayne. Wayne Harris, who I love as players, I'm not sure they could be a one or a two, so this would give us another guy for that option. Uh, third round, this one became really tough because of just what was there. Um, lots of running backs available at this point, more wide receivers, more defensive tackles. So we had guys like Mason, the wide receiver from Auburn, Matthews, the wide receiver from Vandy. Um, could even carry the running back from Arizona, Sutton, the defensive tackle from Arizona State, uh, Chris Smith, defensive end out of Arkansas, and McGill, the corner out of Utah. This one for me was kind of a toss-up between McGill, the corner, and then Chris Smith, the defensive end. I ended up going with Chris Smith, the defensive end, uh, just because I'm basing this off of right now, and as of right now, we still don't have another defensive end on this roster. Um, so I kind of went more with need on this one along with ranking. Um, so I went with Smith, the defensive end of Arkansas. And then fourth round, again, not a whole lot of options for available here. Uh, Sankey, the running back from Washington. Johnson, the defensive tackle from Louisiana State. Clark, the defensive end from West Virginia. Huff, the wide receiver from uh, Oregon. And Jeff Coat, the defensive end out of Texas. And then we had a quarterback available, McCarron out of Alabama. Um, Probably could have gone Jeff Code here, maybe, or maybe one of the defensive tackles. Um, I ended up kind of going just a little bit out of personal feelings here on this one, going with McCarron out of Alabama, uh, just because I think it couldn't hurt, especially from the fourth round on, to try and find another guy you could develop as a quarterback. Um, I'm not taking our Whedon signing, as I explained earlier, with any um, as any notification that we're just going to make him our incarnate cornerback or quarterback after Romo's gone. So 
having another young guy in there to battle with Whedon, particularly what happened with the on what happens with Orton. Uh, so that's what I did this time. Um, again, you know, feel free to run uh, run the simulator yourself. Let me know what you decided to do. Um, I'll put the link again in the description for that. Um, and I think that'll do it for this one. Um, Again, I haven't really heard much back on the first one as far as any fans that would potentially be interested in doing some type of a Google Hangout as the draft comes along to kind of talk about what we want to do. Um, so that's still something I'm interested in. So, you know, if you see this and you're interested in that, you know, let me know. Uh, you can either send me a comment on this on YouTube, uh, send me a tweet. I'm going to put my Twitter handle on there. Um, uh, maybe go ahead and you know, feel free to tweet out the link to this to anybody you know who deals with the Cowboys, you know, Cowboys stuff as a known Cowboys uh, person on Twitter. Um, in terms of fans, I mean, not necessarily like the Cowboys reporters or anything like that, but um, but who you think might be interested in that type of thing. Uh, just trying to get a whole lot of fan corroboration on this type of deal. Um, so yeah, I think that will do it for this week. Um, and we'll kind of see what happens as free agency goes on. Uh, probably by the next video next week, we should have an idea of what Jared Allen decided to do. And by then, we'll probably also know if the Cowboys brought in anybody else or what else might be going on. Um, so, everybody have a good evening and a good week. And go Cowboys!